Welcome back. 18 years ago this week, our nation was changed forever with the 9-11 terror attacks. And perhaps nothing changed more for everyday Americans than the way we fly. And tonight, we are bringing you the first of a two-part 360 perspective on the agency that was created to prevent another 9-11. We're talking about the Transportation Security Administration, or the TSA. On September 11th, 2001, 19 Al Qaeda terrorists armed with box cutters hijacked four U.S. airliners. Two hit the twin towers of the World Trade Center in New York. Another hit the Pentagon and the fourth plane crashed in a Pennsylvania field. Nearly 3,000 people were killed. More have died since because of the cleanup efforts and the deadliest attack on American soil. Now, 69 days later, in direct response to the terror attacks, President George W. Bush signed the Aviation and Transportation Security Act into law, forming the TSA. Its job to protect the United States transportation systems, including rails, highways, ports, and pipelines, but its most important mission, airport security. Since then, the agency has instituted a long list of reactive security policies. 50,000 TSA screeners hired to check every single passenger and bag boarding commercial flights, mostly with metal detectors and x-ray machines. They also reinforced the plane cockpit doors and expanded the Federal Air Marshal Service. Just two months after 9-11 in December, there was a terror attempt. The so-called shoe bomber tried to ignite explosives hidden in his shoes on a flight from Paris to Miami. The TSA's response in August 2006, they started requiring all of us to take off our shoes. They said that decision was based on intelligence pointing to a continuing threat. Also, in August 2006, terrorists plotted to set off liquid explosives on at least 10 airliners traveling from the UK to the US and Canada. British police foiled that plot. TSA reacted again, banning liquids, gels, and aerosols from all carry-on bags. One month later, they amended that to the 311 rule, allowing small amounts of some liquids and gels in your bags. They also deployed more federal air marshals overseas. They also raised ID standards, increasing random screenings, canine patrols, and revamped trainings for bomb appraisals and screenings. Then came the full body scanners because of the underwear bomber. In December 2009, an Al-Qaeda extremist on a flight from Amsterdam to Detroit tried to detonate an IED in his underwear. Passengers stopped him. The TSA's response came three months later with advanced imaging technology and hundreds of airports that can detect weapons, explosives, other concealed items under passengers' clothing. But they also caused widespread concerns about personal privacy. Now fast forward to October 2010. British and UAE authorities intercepted two IEDs concealed in printer cartridges on two separate cargo planes from Yemen headed to the U.S. The next month the TSA reacted. Air cargo shipments from Yemen suspended indefinitely and passengers can no longer bring printer cartridges in their carry-on bags. TSA made a proactive change to help flyers in December 2011. They launched a paid service called TSA PreCheck to help cut down on screening, wait times for known and trusted flyers, and they let you keep your shoes on too. Then in May 2012, another bomb plot discovered by FBI and other foreign officials, this one resembling an underwear bomb. December 2014, technology and pat downs a big focus. TSA making enhancements of the imaging technology, improved pat down procedures as well. And then January 2015, terrorists tried to conceal IEDs in commercial electronics like cell phones. July 2017, new stronger procedures, personal electronics larger than cell phones, have to be put in separate bins for x-ray. In 2019, the U.S. will spend $7.7 .7 billion to fund the TSA, employing more than 53,000 people who screen 1.7 million American flyers in more than 450 airports each day. So we've broken down the timeline of events that have led to the rules that we all follow now when we fly. In part two of this 360 perspective, we're going to look at how successful these policies are in protecting our airways, whether flyers feel safe or just inconvenienced, as well as looking at how airport security is conducted in other countries. In the meantime, if you want to tell us what you think about TSA, head to our Facebook pages, KOAA5 and Elizabeth Watts News. And if you have an idea for a 360 perspective, send an email to 360 at koaa.com.